How many are thankful this morning to be in the house of God? On this Easter Sunday morning, how many are thankful for a beautiful day to worship our Lord and Savior? In Matthew chapter 28, verses 5 and 6, it says, And the angel said, and answered and said to the women, Fear ye not, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. But he is not here, for he has risen. As he said, come and see the place where they lay him. In Acts 26 and 23, it says that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise of the dead and should show the light unto the people and the Gentiles. How many are thankful that he didn't just die for our sins, but he rose again, conquering death, hell, and the grave. And this morning we have hope. He will break every chain and we can overcome through our God. Thank you, Jesus.
am I surrounded by some people who will worship him not because it's Easter, but because of what he's done? <laughs> praise God, praise God. Now listen, I know sometimes I can be a little crazy, so I'm sorry, Pastor. But I, I just, I feel like it needs to be said sometimes. We do it naturally, but I just want to encourage everybody that just because today is quote-unquote a national holiday, we appreciate that our nation celebrates Easter. We don't celebrate it because it's on the calendar. We celebrate it because our Savior. We celebrate it because God robed in flesh, came down, was crucified for you and for me was killed, murdered for my sin. And then on today, he rose up, defeating hell, Satan, and the grave. And so I'm glad it's on the calendar, but that is not why I worship. I worship because the Lord has defeated death. And as we as learned in youth today, hopefully they were listening. The wages of sin is death. And so when it says that Jesus conquered death and has the keys to hell, what it is saying is today you don't have to leave with the same sin you came in with. Today you don't have to walk out of them doors with the same things that bound you up all them years. Because we serve a God who's conquered that. Amen? Amen? So today, with that in mind, I wonder if we have some people who will say, you know what? I need that. I got some things in my life that I need God to take care of. I got some baggage I walked in here with. And if what you're saying is true, I need that. If, if that is you, I know sometimes it's awkward, but I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, it's a thousand times I promise you, not a single person in here is looking at you. And so what I'm about to say is for you and you alone. It's not so your neighbor can see you. This is so you understand that I'm making a statement towards God and for me. And so if that is you, if you come in here, you know, hey, I need something from God. I, I'm hurting in my body. I got, some, or I got some sin in my life I need taken out. With I got some financial trouble. You need something from the God who rose, the God who is alive. By, by faith, and this, I'm not doing it as an example. This, I need something today. If that is you, by faith, by the showing of your faith, can you raise your hand right now? And can you lift that prayer up to God? Say, God, I need you today. Lord, we come to you right now in this house. Lord, we pray to you because you are the only God who is alive. You are the only God who has power in your name, who can touch and heal and minister to every single one of these needs that are here today. Lord, we are acknowledging that we need you. And we are coming forth with that need. Lord, I ask you touch every need in this house right now. Loose your spirit on these people, God, that they feel your love and they feel your presence. Lord, we don't serve a dead God. In Jesus' name, in the only name that has power to save the only name that has power to deliver. In Jesus' name we pray. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise for what he's doing here? Hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated. I want to invite, or not invite, I want to uh, welcome all of the, the guests we have here today. Uh, whether it's your first time or, you know, you're a forever guest like me, uh, I want to welcome you. We're happy that you've made the decision to 
to come share it with us. And, uh, and so I hope you have a great time. If it is your first time, I do believe we have some special boxes, so make sure you get your goodie box. Of course, we have tons of goodies today. There's a ton of, I've probably eaten my weight in those Hershey's marshmallow eggs. But we want to welcome you. We do want to continue our worship and giving. So we have two ways to give here uh, at Way of Life. We have online and we have in-house on site. So on site, we have the giving kiosk that you probably walk past in, in the front there. Travis, it's good to see you, man. You hit out. We have the giving kiosk out in the front. You can swipe your card, whatever you need to do there. Uh, we'll have the ushers come up, and of course, our children's box that we use to teach uh, the kids why it's important to give. And then we have uh, the giving box. I won't make a comment, but it looks beautiful. And then our online, which is wayoflife.church. Uh, you can do that through your, your mobile phone or or I don't, if you brought a laptop, that's more power to you. Uh, you can always text to give the number that is on the screen, and that will allow you to give as well. I want you to, to worship with us as we move into this next song. Um, Christ is, is moving in here, and, and I want to release you to know that, that you're not just doing it for show, but our, our God is alive. So when we worship, when we clap, when we dance, we're not just doing it for us, but we're doing it for the God we serve. In Jesus' name, worship with us. So 
You got something in your life you need God to do? Believe it. If he said it, it can be done. If he said it, it will be done. We believe, Jesus. We believe, Jesus. We believe. in an impossible situation today, I want you to know that he is able to move. He is able to move every mountain. He is able to remove every enemy in your life. Hallelujah. Can we just lift our hands and worship the Lord right now? He is able. Could you just believe again? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, whatever you're facing today, he is in the house today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together, lift our voices unto the Lord. Oh, glory. Amen. Amen. We welcome you to Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday at Way of Life. We're so glad that you are here. If you've been here many times or if this is your first time, we're so thankful that you are here. Can we give a warm welcome to all those that are guests today? We're so glad that you have chosen to be with us on this very special day. I have a request. 
for everyone in this place. I know that Easter, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Christmas, we get in that holiday mode, right? We kind of settle back. We're waiting for lunch or waiting for the kids to hunt Easter eggs or we can't wait to get some Reese's and some some marshmallow Twix, something out there. <laughs> There's plenty to go around. But could we just take the next little while and could we have church? I believe the Lord wants to minister to somebody today. Hallelujah, you've been away from God and God wants you back. He, he's meeting you here today. Hallelujah, some of you have never had the privilege of receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost just like they did in the book of Acts. I want you to know it's real and it's ready and it's for you right now. You can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost before you leave this house today with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. Amen. I want you to know that if you have never been baptized, what, what is the answer to the question, who needs to be baptized? Everyone. Everyone. Everyone needs to be baptized. It is not some... Uh, icing on the cake like modern Christianity has made it. It's made it like some, some show of something that you've already accomplished, but it is a part of salvation. It is an essential part. Jesus himself said you must be born again of the water and of the Spirit. Baptism and the Spirit, or receiving the Spirit, is essential. Amen. You need to be baptized, and you need to be baptized in Jesus' name. And so... Do I need to be rebaptized? There's a good question. Well, if you were baptized as an infant, no one was ever baptized in Scripture as an infant. It's not there. It's an act of faith and obedience. And so you can't do that when you're an infant. That's not valid. It's not in Scripture. You have to do it when you know what you're doing. So if you're baptized that way, you need to be rebaptized. If you were baptized and you don't remember how somebody baptized you, if they didn't emphasize the name of Jesus in your life, then, well, it's so essential that you need to make sure you're baptized the right way and you need to be baptized in Jesus' name today. If you were baptized and you know that somebody said in the titles Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, no one was ever baptized ever, ever, ever in the titles Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in Scripture. It's not in there. You can't find it. If you find it, you can have my house, my car, my dog. Oh, wait, it's not my dog to give. That's Anna's. But I'm not worried because you can't find it. It's not in there. They weren't baptized that way. They were all baptized in the name of Jesus. So if you remember you were baptized the wrong way, you need to be baptized the right way. Amen. And I have great news for you. We have a new baptistry. It's full of water. It's clean. We're ready for you. We have robes. We have towels. We have clothes for the men. And we can baptize you before you leave this house today in the lovely name of Jesus. Amen. We're so glad that you're here and so thankful that you have chosen to be at Way of Life. And uh, if you don't have a home church, you need to come back. We have Tuesday night prayers at 7. We have uh, Wednesday night, Better Way of Life Wednesday. This week's actually first Wednesday. And so we come together and worship. And uh, Sister Anna is going to be bringing the word. Amen. It's looking forward to that. And then, of course, uh, next month, uh, well, actually... In May, we have Mother's Day, and then the week after Mother's Day, I want you to put this on your calendar. I know it's kind of early. If you could put that announcement up, hand-in-hand -hand marriage enrichment weekend. And so that is going to be Friday night at 7, and we're going to gather together, and uh, Brother and Sister Holly, Jean Holly, Carla Holly are going to be teaching, and uh, they're a fantastic couple. They pastor in Wichita Falls. And uh, they're going to be here ministering to us, all of our married couples. We're going to have a lot of fun that night. We're going to have prizes to give away. Also, afterwards, afterwards, we are going to have a, a wonderful meal for the couples. We're going to go to a restaurant. We're renting out the whole place, and it's going to be free of charge. You're not going to have to pay anything. The church is going to take care of it. There's no charge for the seminar, and there's no charge for the meal. 
And so we're going to have a sign-up sheet real soon for you for that. But I wanted to start announcing it so you can put it on your calendar. It's Friday night, the 17th. Saturday morning, we'll have Continental Breakfast, and we're going to have more teaching on Saturday morning. And then the Hollies will be with us on that Sunday morning. And so it's just going to be a fantastic weekend. There's going to be lots of, lots of good information, a lot of fun, some prizes, some gifts, and some alone time. We're going to have... Uh, we're going to have uh, child care for you parents, so you don't have to worry about your child care that night. And it's going to be great. Yeah. Amen. There's people in here that don't realize they're going to be keeping kids that night, but they are. Congratulations. <laughs> Amen. All right, all that out of the way. Let's get to the Word. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Exodus chapter 12 and verse 3. Amen. What a beautiful worship service. Our children did such a fantastic job. Sister Amanda is doing such a great job with them. And then my wife and Brother Kobe leading this great praise team. And, of course, Brother Jordan and the, and the band. They're just, man, they're just awesome. I love them. Praise God. Exodus 12 and 3. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of souls Every man, according to his eating, shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. A lamb for every house. And my title this Easter Sunday morning is simply this, Love the Lamb. Love the Lamb. Amen. Can we pray? In the name of Jesus, I pray that you touch our hearts, our minds. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that you touch us, Lord, that you would transform lives today. Lord, those that have not been washed in the waters of baptism, that they would commit to obey the scripture, Lord, that those that have not been filled with your spirit, with the evidence of speaking with other tongues, that they would reach out for it and receive it today in faith. Those that have walked away, Lord, I pray that they would repent and return home, and we will throw a party for them as they come back, just as heaven rejoices. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, put your Bibles down and put your hands together right now. Praise God. You may be seated. It was always curious to me that God commanded Moses to tell the congregation of Israel to take a lamb, to take a lamb on the 10th day of the month. And the Bible shows us in other places the more detailed uh, passage that we just read or more details of the passage we just read and not only were they supposed to pick a lamb but they were supposed to pick a lamb that was without blemish they were supposed to check it over make sure that it was just right that nothing was wrong with the lamb and the bible shows us that they were supposed to bring it into their house and so they would set up a small pen history tells us they would set up a small pen or a cage in their in their living quarters and they would put the lamb there and it was it was really for a couple of purposes one they wanted to make sure that this lamb that was without spot or blemish did not get hurt again because out in the field out in the out out, out on the hillside and there's predators out there there's there's uh, holes to fall in. There's rocks to bump 
the, uh, the, the limbs on and they would not be perfect anymore. And so for those four days, they would bring them into the house. And so they would pick out a lamb without blemish and they would bring it into their house and they would keep it for four days. And there they would feed it and they would water it and they would make sure it stayed safe. And if you have ever been around uh, an animal very long, most, most people, not everybody are animal lovers, but if you're around animals, especially children, if they're around animals very long, it won't be long until they become attached to them. And uh, over the course of my childhood, I remember, uh, especially my brother, he was notorious for bringing strays home. And, of course, my mom and dad, they would say, we're not keeping that stray. And it wouldn't be long. It would stay around just long enough, and we would give it a name, you know. And, and, uh, and then the next thing you know, dad's laying on the couch with it on his chest, and he's loving that thing just as much as we are. And, and uh, uh, no cats, though, thank God. Just, just dogs. Just dogs. If you're a cat person, God bless you. I'll pray for you. But uh, anyway... Uh, you you know you want something that loves you back. Cats don't really love you back. They just they just kind of exist, you know, amen. Uh, but anyway, uh, it, it's just uh, it's kind of our nature, you know. If a, if an animal's around, it won't be long till we're naming it, we're petting it. And it's kind of inevitable that that the family is going to fall in love with this lamb. It's four days and four nights. They're they're having to feed it and water it and care for it and and and, uh, and become attached to this lamb. I notice in Scripture, you know, you, you've seen the story where, where Jesus went into the temple and he was so angry, he, he took out a whip and he kicked over the tables of the money changers. And the, the Bible also said that they were those that sold sacrifices. And so the reason Jesus was so upset is because they had made the temple a place of commerce. And not only a place of commerce, but they had made the temple a place where uh, they had taken the love out of the process. They had, they had taken the sacrifice out of the sacrifice. So instead of, instead of bringing the lamb to the temple and having to take care of it at home for four days and, and bringing it on the way, no matter how long they had to, to, to walk, you know, sometimes they lived in other cities and they would come and they would journey and they would have to carry that lamb or they would have to make sure nothing happened to the lamb on the way. And st- instead of that, people were coming to the temple and they, they would just bring their money and they would just buy their sacrifice. They didn't know that sacrifice's name. They hadn't raised it. They hadn't invested anything in it. There, there, there was no emotion involved. And so, and so when that sacrifice went into the temple to, to be uh, sacrificed and the blood to be shed, there was really no emotional attachment to it. We want to love the lamb today. Jesus wants us to love him. Amen. Amen. We get attached to things, right? I I remember growing up, my my father, my grandfather, my papa, my mom's daddy, he lived down in the country. And he was only about 5'4", but I thought he was a giant. I thought he was, you know, he wore a hat and boots and and he had cows and and, uh, a pond and all the things, a boat and a tractor and all, all those things that uh, the country people have. And uh, it, was, it was like going to Disney World for me. I loved that place. And uh, we would build forts and fires and uh, we would uh, uh, put out trot lines in the tank. And uh, we didn't call it a pond, we called it a tank. I don't, it wasn't pretty enough to be a pond. I don't think it was like muddy. Sometimes we'd, uh, we'd wade off in there and swim. And the mud would be about that deep on our ankles and... But he had a he had a bull, and it, and he, this bull was huge. I mean, it was just a a gigantic bull. But he was a gentle giant. Uh, his name was Puddin. <laughs> oh, Puddin, we love Puddin. Puddin was so big, and of course we were just little things at the time, you know. And uh, and so Puddin would lay out. He'd get down on his knees. He'd lay over against the fence. And we were little, and he was still taller than us when he was laying down. And so we'd get out there, and right here on his forehead, I don't know if you've ever touched a cow's forehead, but it's big and wide, 
and uh, he had just big curls on his forehead. And, and he loved, he, he loved for us just to reach up and do that with our fingers. He, sometimes he'd get, he, he would get too uh, rambunctious with it. He wasn't trying to hurt us, but he, he could throw us pretty far if he wanted to. And, uh, and so we got, we got connected to him. He was part of the family. We talk about him now, you know, 30, 40 years later. And, uh, and, and so we, we loved pudding. But, you know, it kind of came the day when he had exceeded his benefit. And Papa had to take him off in a trailer and brought him back in a cooler. <laughs> it's a little odd eating pudding, you know. I always liked pudding until then. Pudding for dessert, but uh, not pudding for dinner, but... We loved him, and so it was hard to say goodbye. But I think God had a purpose in bringing the lamb into the house for four days. He, he wanted there in that sacrifice, in the Old Testament sacrifice, he wanted there to be some sort of emotional connection. He, he, he wanted that to, uh, to be a part, an allegory, uh, uh, a metaphor for his relationship with us. He, he wanted us to love the Lamb. Amen. Amen. And so let me just tell you today, don't fall out of love with the Lamb. Because sometimes people do. Sometimes people are in love with Him one moment and they are not in love with Him the next. We talked about it last week, Palm Sunday. You know, one minute they're, they're waving palms and singing Hosanna and the next uh, six, seven days later they're saying, crucify Him. And sometimes we do the same thing. We love him. We weep for him. We receive him. We go down in the waters of baptism sometimes. And then along the way, somehow we, we grow cold in our relationship with the lamb. And we, we don't really value him very much. And at some point we think, well, maybe he has, he has exceeded his benefit. And it really is not a benefit to us to live for him anymore. But let me just tell you this morning, uh, don't fall out of love with the lamb. Him. Don't fall out of love with him. You got to love him. In fact, if you have fallen out of love with him, it's time to renew, to rekindle that love for him. And I want to remind you before we leave this house today that he loved you while you were yet a sinner, that he loved you when you didn't love him. He loves you today. He doesn't care how far you've gone. He doesn't care what you've done. He doesn't care what kind of lifestyle you're living. He wants you to know right now and through my voice, I love you. I am I have died for you. I have surrendered myself to you. Don't grow cold in your spirit. Don't fall out of love with the lamb. We see a cautionary tale in scripture. We see King David. David was a shepherd before he was a king. He practically lived his whole childhood caring for them. In fact, he was... He was so integrated with the flock that when Samuel came to his father's house to anoint a king, he went down the line of all the sons. And David's daddy, Jesse, didn't even think, oh, somebody might ought to go get David. He could be the guy. No, he just left him out there. He left him out there. And finally, Samuel got to the end of the line and said, well, God said no to all these. Do you have any more? He said, I know the Lord sent me here to anoint somebody. He said, well, there is one. He's out there tending the sheep. David loved the sheep. He loved the lambs more than his own life. The Bible says that when one was taken by a bear, he ran after the bear. And he took a hold of the bear's beard. And he took the lamb out of his mouth and he killed the bear. The same happened with the lion. But somewhere along the line, after the anointing, after Goliath, after the bear, after the, the lion, after all the things that he accomplished, after he killed his ten thousands, even though Saul killed his thousands, after all the songs that were said about him, and after the, 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 uh, the accolades that he received from all of the people of Israel, and he raised himself up to be king. 
There was a time in his life it seemed that he was too removed from the field because you remember in the field, that's where he wrote the Psalms. That's where he said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's, that, that's where he said, because of your tender mercies, I am not consumed. That's, that, that's where he said that, he, that God repented according to the multitude of his mercies. That's where he said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. He wrote those out in the field as the, as the sheep were making their night sounds, as they would, they would make those little sounds that they make as they lay there as they walk around feeding and watering and here they are he, he, he had been removed from that so long now he was no longer in the field no longer did he touch the lambs no longer did he love them now he sat on his throne and he sat in his ivory tower and he looked down at the rest of the world he had fallen out of love with the lamb the Bible says another part of this cautionary tale in 2 Samuel chapter 11 and it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all of Israel and they destroyed the children of Ammon and they besieged Rabbah and, but David tarried still at Jerusalem the shepherd and the soldier decided to retire And it came to pass at evening time that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba the daughter of Elam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her. For she, for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. And so he committed adultery with Bathsheba. Why? He had fallen out of love with the lamb. He had fallen out of love with the people. He had fallen out of love with the battle. In the days that kings go to battle, he stayed home. And it, it's by no accident that when the prophet came, the Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 12, and the Lord sent Nathan unto David. And he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb which he had brought and nourished up. And it grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man and he spared to take his own flock of, the, of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him but he took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him. And David reacted to this little story that Nathan the prophet was giving him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing. And because he had no pity... And David said to and Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And so what he did was he, he recognized all of a sudden that, that this man, this, this rich man that took the poor man's sheep, Amen. that it was him. And this poor man in this story, this, this little lamb was more than a pet. 
It was brought up with his children. It, it ate of his own table. It drank from his own cup. It was like a daughter. It was not just another lamb. It was, a, it was a unique lamb. This unknown man had something that David had lost. What did he have? He loved the lamb. He cared for it. He made sure that it had everything it needed. And I, I want to remind you today that it's easy. It's easy to separate yourself from the lamb of God when you don't really love him. It's, it's easy to crucify him when you don't really love him. You see, in the, in the New Testament, when they cried crucify him, they cried crucify him because they only loved what he could do for them. And when they recognized that he was not going to set up an earthly kingdom and he was not going to run out the Romans, they despised him and they rejected him and they did not love him for who he was. But oh, I want you to know today that you and I, we have got a fall in love with the lamb all over again amen John the Baptist when he saw Jesus coming he said behold the lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world but I want you to know that Jesus is the lamb of God whether you like it or not but I'm here to tell you this morning on this Easter Sunday that he doesn't want to just be the lamb of God he wants to be your lamb of God he wants to be a part of your life he wants you to love him he wants you to love the sacrifice that he made for you the, the Bible says that, uh, that we should present ourselves a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, which is our reasonable service. What does that mean? Because he died for us, because he surrendered himself, because he shed his own blood. Now it only makes sense for us to live for him. We've got to love the lamb. So Nathan appealed to David's history there's something about that that story that made the the little shepherd boy rise up in david and i'm sure his mind went back to a few of his little faithful sheep that would stay close to him and loved him i i, I would guess that probably one of those that he saved out of the mouth of the bear he brought him back and he nursed him back to health i i, I can only imagine that 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 little lamb that was saved by his shepherd didn't stray very far anymore. Stayed real close. And so here we are today. The enemy is wanting to separate you. He's wanting to isolate you. But ha hallelujah, I want you to know that Jesus Christ loves you. He died for you. He is the lamb of God. And he wants to be your lamb. <laughs> Amen. Jesus' sacrifice that he, that he did and the, the resurrection that we celebrate today, it breaks our hearts when we really love the Lamb. When we really love the Lamb. Amen. Again, that's why Jesus was so frustrated with the money changers and the sacrifice sellers in the temple because they had removed the love out of the sacrifice process. They had removed the care and the process out of the sacrifice. People could come and just buy any old lamb, and that meant nothing to them. That's like the rich man. He took a lamb that meant nothing to him, but you know what? It meant everything to the poor man. I want to be poor. Blessed are those that are poor in spirit. I want you to know that God looks to those that are poor in a contrite spirit uh, pride will never get you into the presence of God but humility will always get you there and I want you to know that this poor man he may not have had a lot but he had something David didn't have he had a love for a lamb that he cared for that he loved that he took care of his children loved and let me remind you parents that if you want your children to live for God make sure you bring the lamb into your house make sure he's there when nobody else is watching. Make sure the lamb is there. Make sure your children see you caring for him. Oh, I love the lamb. I love the lamb. I love the lamb. Make sure your teenagers see you praying and worshiping the lamb. Because what you think is, is optional, your children will think is obsolete. And this poor man was richer than David. Oh, he didn't live in a castle. He didn't have a lot of sheep. But he had a lamb. And he loved it.
me remind you today that Jesus Christ is our lamb. Amen. Matthew 27 and 50, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. Jesus, the Lamb of God. Hebrews 9 and 11, but Christ, become a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle. Not made with hands, that is to say, not of a building. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean, sanctified and purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament by that means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance oh I want you to know today that at 53 years of age and having the Holy Ghost for over 42 years I stand here in this platform and I proclaim to you that I love the lamb he is more precious to me than he was yesterday he is more precious to me than he was last year he is more precious to me than he was 5 10 15 20 30 40 years ago because i was introduced to him at an early age but thank God, thank God I did not just allow him to be some ancillary part of my relationship, but somewhere along the line, I fell in love with him. He loves me, so now I love him. He loved me first when I was a sinner, and so it's only right that I love him now. And so I proclaim to you today, I beg you today, fall in love with the Lamb. If you don't know him, Get to know him. Amen. Take him into your house. Amen. Feed it. Water it. Amen. Care for it. Introduce it to your family. Hallelujah. Love it. You got to love the lamb. So, pastor, how do you survive with bad news and trouble on every side and people who you've invested in walking away and many times blaming you for their own decisions. How do you make it? Well, I can't say it doesn't hurt, but somewhere along the line I fell in love. And love endures. Love forgives. Love doesn't think of itself. Love doesn't puff itself up. The Bible says, and this is, this is really, this is my favorite passage of Scripture. If you could put it up for me. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 14. 2 Corinthians, I'm springing this on him, so be patient. 2 Corinthians 5 and 14. Brother Jordan, if you'll come and play. 2 Corinthians 5 and 14. For the love of Christ constraineth us. Because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them. And rose again. How do I make it? Well, when I don't feel like I can, I just remember who I love. It's time to love the Lamb. Too many people treat church just as a just a pastime, you know. They show up when they want to and give a little bit and 
cry a little bit, sing a little bit, but they never fall in love. The, the, the Bible says that in the last days there'll be people that come to him and he will say, depart from me for I never knew you. Amen. That word knew there is, is, is an intimacy. Amen. I never knew you. And they'll say, Lord, Lord, I, we cast out devils in your name. We healed people in your name. We did all of this. But he'll say again, depart from me. Because I never knew you. And on this Easter Sunday morning, I know I'm supposed to be upbeat. I know we're supposed to be shouting around the, the front today. But some of you, I won't have you next week. You're only here out of obligation to a loved one today. So I figure since I got you, I might as well talk to you like the Father. When he saw the prodigal over the hillside, he ran, the Bible said he ran. And as the son was trying to make excuses and say, I'm so sorry, I shouldn't be here. If you just let me be a servant, the father just brushed it all past. He fell on his neck, kissed him, called for the robe and the ring and the sandals and the feast. So why I got you here? Could I just convince you to fall in love? with the Lamb. That same passage of Scripture in the New Living Translation says either way, Christ's love controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for us, we also believe that we have all died out to our old life. He died for everyone so that those who receive His new life will no longer live for themselves instead they will live for Christ who died and raised from the dead amen could somebody maybe you've grown cold today maybe you thought well I'll just offer any old lamb I'll just offer a little a little sacrifice on Easter Sunday to make my parents happy, to make my friends happy, to make my pastor stop texting me. But could I just, could I just get you before you do something drastic? Could I remind you to love the Lamb? Well, Pastor, I don't know if I can live that way. Well, if you love him, you can. Because now, because he died for you, that you no longer live for yourself. But you live for him. It's your reasonable service. Can we stand? Oh, can we love the lamb today? Can we take him into our house? Reintroduce him to the family? Could we proclaim, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we're going to love the Lamb. I want you to know the waters of baptism are ready for you if you want to be baptized today. If you need the Holy Ghost, you can receive it today. If you, if you just want to come back to God, I want you to know He's waiting. He's ready. He's ready. These altars are open. Could we just love the Lamb? Don't fall out, in love, out of love with the Lamb. Don't 
don't fall out of love with the Lamb. Because the tragedy that follows will haunt the rest of your days. Hallelujah, I love you, Jesus. Oh, forgive us again, oh God, for the times that we have relegated you to the back burner of our lives. We've calculated the cost. Can we just pray? If somebody's next to you, reach over and pray with them right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Could you fall in love with the Lamb this morning? Hallelujah. He shed His blood for you. He loves you. He loves you. You yes. have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am made. Oh, that's it. Let's call on the name of the Lord right now. I think there should be some tears in this altar. There should be some, some voices raised in repentance today. Don't walk away from this place the same way you came. Don't walk away from this place the same way you came. Hallelujah. He loves you. It's time to love the Lamb. He died and rose again so that you might have life. He rent the veil from top to bottom so that you could come boldly before His throne. So that you could find Him today. Oh, I 